We might be live right now. We could be. <laughs> hey, right. we're live. All right. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name's Daniel. I'm the creative director here at Pixel Press. Uh, this is Drew. Hello. I'm the art director. Um, and he also does a lot of the animation. Illustration. Some illustration, stuff like that. General Easy art stuff. stuff. Easy. And uh, we're here to talk to you a little bit about some of the artwork in Floors. So you've probably seen the Stories button that's down in the bottom of your screen when you have the app open. Or you might have seen it when you go to Create, you see the uh, little book icon that makes you choose a character set before you uh, design with. And what those are, those are IP. And IP for us is what we call the different storylines in the games, right? What does it stand for? It stands for intellectual property. Um, it's like a license or a, it's like Adventure Time or a regular show. Those are all IP as well. Um, so right now our IP is essentially just like an asset pack that you can design with. You skin your levels with uh, some of the terrain, some of the backgrounds, and you can also use our characters. Enemies. Uh, yeah, enemies as well, Hazard, power-ups, hazards, hazards portals. collectibles, portals, All maybe cars that, someday. Did you say backgrounds? I did say backgrounds. Um, but someday, soon, we would like to have what's called a story mode. And story mode is going to be a mini-game that will be designed to kind of introduce you to the characters, introduce you to uh, kind of how the game works. And uh, what story mode is going to be is uh, a set of four levels, probably a boss arena at the end where you can fight some bosses uh, eventually. Not yet, <laughs> but soon. It's also going to have uh, an intro animation, some level select uh, graphics, as well as outro animation. So it's going to be... Uh, a pretty built out cool yeah, thing more fully realized more fully realized <laughs> definitely <laughs> um and so our uh, debut ips that we have right now you've probably seen are save the parents and fiddlehead stones of eden mm. but you probably don't know what those are so uh i'm gonna go ahead and go over a little bit about Save the Parents, what the story is, and also Fiddleheads, and then show you some artwork as well. And I'm gonna do that right now. After I switch over. So, this is our Save the Parents logo, along with all our characters that you've probably seen if you've played the game at all. So this is Flip. Nobody knows any of their names yeah, yet. Yeah, well, it's on the website. It is on the website if you've gone to that. Most of you probably haven't <laughs> gone to that. Um, so this is Flip. He was who we decided was the leader, but it seems like everybody kind of likes Wi-Fi a little better. He's the guy on the left. This is the guy to the left of Flip. In here, he has a slingshot. We actually took his slingshot away because it was really hard For now. to animate. For now. But it might be back. Who knows? He might shoot soon. Who knows? Um, he's the tech expert. We kind of uh, were inspired by Goonies, yep. if, you're, if you're old enough to know Goonies. Um, and then over here you have Melody. She's named that because she likes music. Mm -hmm. And then her little brother, Miles, who is kind of inspired by Bebe's kids, if you're old enough to remember <laughs> that as well. And uh, on this next slide, this is one of the intro animation slides for the story mode so you'll see these kind of things with all the story modes as they come out they'll have an intro comic or an mm -hmm. animation or something that sets up uh basically the game that you're about to play yeah it kind of tells the uh, the pre-story if you will yeah um so here they are in their clubhouse you know hanging out looking at their fancy computer system he's looking pretty surprised and excited <laughs> so they formed this group called Comet, these four kids, and uh, that stands for Children of Mercury Extraterrestrial Trackers, and Mercury is the uh, city in Ohio that they live in. Um, but soon, after they notice this, they'll notice that aliens from the planet Crux have invaded their town and taken all of their parents away, hence the title Save the Parents. 
So the game is set up that way, and you're supposed to save your parents from an alien prison through four levels, and then we'll have an outro animation, which this is part of. This is a spoiler. This is a little spoiler alert. This is Flip punching an alien in the face. <laughs> and a snot. That's actually that's also... That's a snot. That's the first reveal of what that alien looks like without a helmet on. That's true. Snot pours out of his mouth. Yeah. When he gets punched. Goo. That's their blood. That's their goo blood Their snot. goo blood. Watch blood out. It's a green goo. It also kills you if you fall in it. Yeah. Which is... It's dangerous. It's a message mismatch because you can sometimes <laughs> <laughs> touch it also and it doesn't kill you but you, you know just, you never know so we'd have creative freedom in our games <laughs> and then here's them running off of the alien ship with their parents and in our fictitious city of mercury ohio there are also fictitious humongous redwood trees that yeah. grow probably not indigenous to ohio you'll only see this screen if you beat if you win save the parents if you beat and save the, the parents too. Oh, and if you watch this stream and if it. you're watching this stream you'll also see it but there's more there are more there are more whatever these are called frames, frames. of this animation yeah, that you won't see today yeah and then here just because i thought you all might be interested are some concept sketches of some of our characters that we worked on this is melody this is Melody where I didn't draw her face. <laughs> she, she looks like a Wookiee. <laughs> um, and then we've got some of the flip flip iterations. We went with this yeah. one, when we were, obviously. When we were doing flip, we decided he loved all sports. And so we were trying to come up with an outfit that reflected mm -hmm. as many sports as possible. And by all sports, we obviously only mean <laughs> hockey and baseball because well, we're from St. Louis and that's the only things that matter. <laughs> the problem became he had too much stuff on and you couldn't really make sense of him. Too much sports. Yeah, too much sports. Too much sports is never good for anyone. <laughs> More video games, less sports. So this is Miles and we went through a few iterations with him, even this uh, Kanye West in a bubble iteration <laughs> which is one of my favorites i like the one below it where he's got the goggles on. that also looks a little bit like kanye west that was sort of the idea there was that wi-fi had kind of hooked him up with some yeah. some cool tech yes so uh, none of these actually look like the finished miles but this one is his body yeah and then his face is his somewhere face? else did we not get his face i'm not this sure is, we put this his face that one's this that, one's kind of that's his face. basically his face. We changed his and hair. his bear. Yeah, who may or may not be used as a shooting weapon soon. Oh. Who knows? Um, and here's a few iterations of the slug. He's an alien enemy. We also call him a slime glider because he glides on slime. He glides on his slime snot. <laughs> um, and then here's him shooting a big ball of slime, which is pretty interesting, I think, personally. <laughs> Um, and then here's Wi-Fi, who I kind of modeled after our own employee, Rob Santos, <laughs> because he kind of looks like him in these sketches. He does a little bit there. Yeah, he does. So I think that might be it for these slides. Yep. It is. And I will uh, go ahead and tell you a little bit about Fiddleheads. So Fiddleheads, colon, Stones of Eden is um, a story about brownies and I'll show you a little bit of this stuff too in a second so if you've played the game you're probably kind of familiar with this one already her name is Figo and she is a brownie in the fiddlehead family and a brownie what a brownie is is a house elf or a gnome or a munchkin yeah. or a dwarf basically a little they're human. tiny they're tiny they're little and they um they're human shaped, they're obviously. They're smaller than a rat. They're smaller than a rat, larger than an ant. Yeah. Caterpillar, roach. Bigger than. Yes. Yeah. Larger than that. Um, and they live right now in a barrel. Their family does, and they scavenge for food and and you know things, stuff. They're scavengers. They love and, love items that are sort of left behind, mm -hmm. and they like to borrow things. Hence the button on her yeah. on her dress, and her bow and arrow that I like to think she fashioned out of a toothpick, but maybe <laughs> not. I don't know. Um, but the story goes that life hasn't always been so hard for the Fiddlehead family. A long time ago, before 
the characters that you've played with so far were born, their grandpa lived there, and he had possession of these things called the Stones of Eden. And these stones grant whoever possesses them kind of a lavish life or a life of a utopian life, if you will. A happy life. A happy life. You know, really happy life. <laughs> really, really happy. And um, one day, though, these evil rats came, and they decided that they wanted the Stones of Eden. They wanted the happy life. They were tired of being rats. So they who came. Can, who can blame them, really? I know. They were supposed to be mice anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and then they, somebody made them rats. <laughs> um, but anyway, the life of a mouse would be much better. So they come to steal these stones, and they only manage to get two because Gramps, the grandpa fiddlehead, takes one, runs away into hiding. And all of a sudden, nobody has this utopian life. Everybody has this horrible life. And um, now, Grandpa is back. He's uh, met with his grandchildren, Figo, who's one of them. And then Harvey is the next one you've been playing with. And he's ready to take back these stones and get this life back. So that is where the story mode will start. You'll go through four levels. You'll fight the rats. And you'll eventually you'll collect the stones. You collect coins because those are in video games. They don't really <laughs> make a whole lot of sense, but they kind of do. <laughs> um, and then you'll win, and you'll have your awesome life for your fiddlehead brownies, or elves, or dwarfs. So these two you've seen, Figo, Harvey. This guy you probably haven't. This is Gramps. He's coming soon, like within the next. I'm going to say two weeks, you'll be able to create with him. Only old Gramps right now. Young Gramps is just here because he's handsome. And <laughs> he has the physique yeah. of, of a model brownie. Yeah, he's a good looking guy. He is. He's sexy, I'm going to say. Um, and then we have one random character who is Gramps' tough and really really random friend and his name is squirm diddles the worm and so you'll also be able to play with him soon um and that'll probably be kind of interesting because his animations will be different than yeah. any character that we've done so far so it'll, be it'll probably be a lot of fun to uh you know create with yeah. play with yeah. playing with the worm <laughs> And then I've also got some concept sketches after the rats. I forgot to show you yeah. some of the rats. So You've here's some iterations. Guys, You've yeah. seen these guys. You probably haven't seen them with the cool steampunk goggles on. But uh, you probably haven't seen them this large either. Yeah. Because in the game, he's tiny. Little guy. Wearing a bottle cap as a hat. Riding on a couple of roaches. That's what he does. And then here's a few different iterations of the walking rats. We uh, originally thought maybe they'd hit you with uh, flaming matches, but we then we decided not to do that. Not just yet. Not just yet, anyway. Maybe coming soon. And here's a few uh, concept, concept sketches just for you artists out there who might be interested in seeing some of this stuff. This is Harvey and some bottle caps. Maybe once he was going to have a thimble on his head. Yeah. There's a snail. It has nothing to do with the <laughs> game at all. Um... Then here's a few uh, cleaner sketches that our friend David, mm -hmm. I need to mention, David did all of this art. He uh, is not a full-time employee here at Pixel Press, but he is contracted out to do artwork because we like what he does. Yeah. And he's a nice guy and fairly handsome, honestly, <laughs> I also think. So at some point, we want to get flying enemies into this game. So here was an idea for... Uh, a homemade helicopter Da Vinci style rat with a very tiny derby hat. I like on. his little hat. He's a tiny. I don't know where he bought it. <laughs> it's a probably tiny from hat a doll. Shop. He probably got it from a doll or something. Could be. Yeah. Could be from a doll. <clears throat> you know, your jetpack concept, mm -hmm. firecrackers, making you jet. It's pretty awesome. And then we're done. So I'm going to hand the reins over to Drew to tell you about something pretty exciting, and that is the newest IP, or story mode. IP stands for what? Intellectual, intellectual property. property. It's our own original intellectual property <laughs> that we've created, and it's new, and it's coming soon. So here's Drew. Yeah, so this one uh, we're calling Ninjetsu. 
Um, and uh, it's going to be about ninjas who have integrated rockets into their fighting style. So they have rockets strapped to their arms and stuff like that, so they can do really hard punches, jump really high, yeah, stuff like fly. that. Yeah. Um, and their city has been overrun by ghosts, and they're going to fight to take their city back. Not the Patrick Swayze type of ghosts <laughs> from the movie Ghost. But Though just as dangerous. That's just, just as dangerous. They are just as dangerous as so, he is in Roadhouse. Uh, here we go. Let me show you. These are going to be the characters that you're going to get to uh, play in the ninjutsu game. Uh, so here we have Ryu. I guess we should also Ryo. mention... Ryo. Ryo. We should also mention that another exciting thing about this is it's 32-bit or yep. pixel, pixel art, art, which some of you nostalgic gamers will probably appreciate. Um, so we have Ryo on the left and Boken on the right. These guys are twin brothers. Um, they were born into the ninjutsu clan and are fiercely loyal to one another. Um, and they always stick together, even even if they have an argument or yeah. get angry with one another. They're all brothers do. They always have each other's back. Um, next, we have Hotai. Um, Hotai was an orphan, and uh, he was caught stealing by the ninjutsu mm, food, clan. Because he's fat. <laughs> he wasn't fat then when he was an orphan. Was he not? That's he true. A, he was he a was skinny probably guy. Probably scrawny. Um, <laughs> so the, the ninjutsu clan took him in and trained him, uh, and his foes are often amazed at his speed and agility, given his considerable size. You said that as if you had written it beforehand that's, and read it. That's absurd. <laughs> Which um, would never happen no. here. This is off the cuff. <laughs> of We're winging it. Uh, next we have uh, Himitsu. Himitsu. What does that mean in Japanese? Um, all, these, all these are Japanese words that mean things. Himitsu was a goddess, I believe. I thought it meant secret. Oh, it means secret. It means secret. No, you're right. Hotai is a god. La Abodanza. <laughs> <laughs> it means secret. Hotai was a god, but Himitsu means secret, apparently. Um, and uh, her name is a uh, secret because she never speaks, she never removes her mask. She's shrouded in mystery, and she just showed up at the Ninjutsu Clan Dojo one day and defeated all of the, uh, the members, the ninjas yes, there. Yes, defeated them, as well as the ones in the Cobra Kai Dojo, <laughs> who are notorious rival, for being really dojo. mean. Yeah. But she couldn't beat the sensei, no. um, and because she couldn't, she respected him and joined the clan. Um, she, uh, but despite all that mystery, she's proven herself. Uh, to be loyal and a strong member of the Ninjutsu clan. Um, She's great. She is great. She's great. And then we have Kasai. So Kasai is actually a spirit from the other world. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, I guess we haven't really explained the other world. Yeah, we'll yeah. get to. Uh, yeah, we'll get that's to. the next one. That's the the next other one. world will remain a mystery for now, but you'll <laughs> soon know what the other world is. The other world is where all the spirits are. Yes. And uh, <laughs> now, now you know. <laughs> <laughs> because all these ghosts basically started invading their city, uh, they sought help from the spirit world, and Kasai is the one who appeared to them. Um, so he's specially equipped to fight uh, all of these ghosts. So those are all the heroes that you're going to be able to play with. And then these are, are the bad guys that you're going to be fighting. Uh, they're called Oni. And uh, this guy on the left, he's basically half human and half ghost. He's my uh, favorite. He's got a ghostly body. You can see his skeleton bits uh, floating he around in there. He doesn't need as many bones as most people need. He doesn't. He just needs a couple ghost. of shoulder bones and a quarter of a spine. <laughs> he's got a skull right there. And a skull. Um, and then uh, this guy right here, he'll be running back and forth on platforms trying to, to bite the heroes with his sharp teeth there. Um, but these guys are, are what come, came out of the uh, other world. Should we talk mm -hmm. about... Um, Where the other world came from? Yeah. Probably. So uh, the reason these ghosts have all invaded their city is there is a guy uh, who wanted to become immortal. And... Uh, he eventually got the name Ghost Heart. Ghost Heart. Because uh, his attempt at becoming immortal was to turn his heart into a ghost. And doing that opened up a portal to the other world. Mm -hmm. And all of these bad guys came out of Ghost Heart's heart. Yes. The ghost Heart will eventually be a boss in the game. That you can fight. So you'll be able to fight him at the end of the eventually. story mode and free... The world of the ghosts. Yeah, we don't have a, a picture of Ghost Heart yet, at least not to show you. Because we haven't drawn. I've drawn. Um, I drew him. Drew, drew him. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
<laughs> so that's 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 coming soon. I think we're both really excited about Ninjutsu. Definitely. I think the whole office is yeah, really excited about I think about everybody's Ninjutsu. pretty stoked on Ninjutsu. How do I put it back on the camera? On us. Like this. That way. So All right. Here we are again. Hello. So that's a little overview of some of the artwork. Yeah. Um, some of the gonna, stuff that we do as artists. And we're going to keep adding uh, new IP. and New IP. And eventually, you know, we want to get to where we get other people's IP or stuff from their brains into our game. You know, anything from your friend's webcomic that's awesome that somebody tells us about or anything as large as Iron Man or Powerpuff Girls or, you know, something really cool like that that you could also design with. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of what we do yep. on a day-to-day -day here at Pixel <laughs> Press. Just make cool stuff. We make cool stuff. It's a pretty awesome job. Yeah. Um, before I hand it over to Josh for the second half of our broadcast, I did want to mention something that we've been getting a lot of questions about um, I wanted to address, and that is um, if and when we will allow users to put their own art into the game. And uh, I wanted to let everyone that's interested or ask questions about that know that we are going to do that. It's going to happen. There's been a lot of discussions about it, and there's a lot of thought that's going to have to go into it. There's a lot of issues that uh, pop up when you start to do stuff like that. One of them is uh, quality control. And, you know, right now, when we do the art, it's always awesome, obviously, because <laughs> we did it. Or if we contract the art out, you know, we have David do it or whoever do it, we can kind of control that quality, and it's, it's really easy to say this isn't good enough, let's not put it in the game, as opposed to if we have thousands of people doing it and you know all of a sudden we get this uh, surge of really not art, good art, art that's not up to par, not to say that you all aren't amazing artists, I'm sure a lot of you are, but there will undoubtedly be those people that will make backgrounds that are pictures of their cat or I'm not you know, against that. Not necessarily a cat. I'm a cat guy. I like cats, but um, I like I like cats. I like cats. Why not? Um, I like dogs too. I'm an equal opportunity pet lover. Um, but you know what I mean. It could be it could be bad if we do that. So we need to figure out intelligent ways to make it easy to create art within the game, but still keep keep the quality there and also right now the way that the art works is really there's a lot that goes into it yeah. drew works you know 24 7 <laughs> on animations uh, the backgrounds are big and hard and and you know the files are large you'd have to have a really solid understanding of sprite animation as well as you know photoshop or digital graphics programs um and so, anyway, we just want you to know that it's coming. We're just going to try to figure out ways to make it easy and fun to do and not a frustrating, yeah. super time-intensive, terrible experience. Yeah, it's got to be fun to do it. It's got to be fun. If it's not fun, then it's not fun. Good point. Let's just you know, write that down, guys, <laughs> for sure. If it's not fun, it's not fun. Yeah. Um, so now... We'll leave you with that. We'll leave you with that bit of wisdom from the art department here at Pixel Press. Yep. I'm going to hand it over to, to Jay Stevens. You've probably seen his name all over the leaderboards yeah. lately. And he's going to talk to you about some really, really, really exciting things that are happening here. All right. Thank you all for listening. Thanks, guys. We love you. All right. All right. Uh, thanks, Drew and Daniel. Uh, that was pretty awesome hearing about some of the some of the new art and characters and that's one of the coolest things about pixel press is that we're going to continually put uh, new characters you can use new backgrounds and keep expanding the uh, elements that creators can use to make their own levels and i think they're right when we said we we're excited about the 32-bit pixel art ninjutsu because that is a really cool kind of retro style uh character set that's going to be fun to use. Um, I mainly want to talk about some of the fixes that we had in our recent update. Uh, Floors 1.01 is available in the App Store now. Uh, that update includes some gameplay tweaks, some bug fixes. Uh, a couple of the big things is that you can now share, which I'm going to show you here shortly, um, via Twitter, Facebook, email. So when you play a level and you like it, 
no problem sharing it with one of your friends. Uh, you can share your own levels. Uh, another thing is, is we are working on the arcade. Uh, one of the things for this current update is we moved the most recent category from only holding like 30 of the last levels to 125. Um, I know we've had some people talk about how you know you make a level and within a couple hours it's already pushed off the board because there's so many levels being published, which is a great problem to have and uh, something we address by at least expanding that category out to 125. Um, with the arcade, we're going to continue to uh, make more filters, um, make new categories. Uh, we're going to implement a search so you can search for a level or possibly a creator. Um, and we're also going to make some of the different categories like most popular within the last week so that those levels with a ton of plays don't just stay at the top and we can try to get as many people's levels featured and basically a better experience for enjoying different levels from different creators. Um, I'm going to get this on screen. Is it... Okay. So as you can see here, I'm in the arcade. Um, I'm going to pick a level to play. Uh, I'm going to click 002 by, uh, created by the username Easy. Uh, one of the new updates in this is that you can get a full view of the sketch. So if I just click on the sketch there, now I can see a full view and see exactly what uh, this creator did to create this level. Um, this is a great opportunity to get ideas and see different ways that you, you can use some of the elements uh, and some of the creator tools. So I'm going to minimize that again. Now I'm just going to hit play. So bear with me for a minute. I'm going to go ahead and play this level. Uh, it's one of our featured levels because it is pretty cool. Um, Melody is the character in use here. I love the color scheme of the blue lava with the gold. Uh, it looks really nice. And let's see. So collecting some coins, running through the level. And I like to try to beat a level completely. Um, with the leaderboard system, you know, collecting 100% of the coins gets you more points uh, than just collecting some of them. So I feel like it's a complete experience when you beat a level and get a top points score and make the leaderboard. Hold on one sec. Supposed to be showing the gameplay right now. Give me a minute and I should be able to get this pulled up. Hmm. Hey, Robin. Hey, yeah, I just I need to get this gameplay on here. I thought I've got the main. It's gone. But that's not what it's showing. Oh, you gotta switch. Uh... You gotta switch right here. So now we're good. Okay, so as you can see, I'm in this level, playing as Melody, uh, collecting some of the coins. Um, if you haven't played this level yet, uh, it's a pretty neat level by the creator Easy. Like I said, it's just called 002, and it is a featured level, so it is easy to find in the arcade. Um, definitely working on making it easier to find creators, find their levels, uh, and I'll show you that here at the end with the share. So on to floor two. And we got a moving extended uh, terrain piece coming down, which is kind of cool. Uh, you just want to make sure you don't get smashed by things like this. I'm going to wait for it to come back up. And we have another one that we got to wait on. And I really, I encourage all the creators to really dive in, look at other people's levels and see what they're doing to get great ideas. Um, you know, I've been making levels a, a long time on this before it was out, and every day I go in and play a level and I see something new that I hadn't thought of to include in a level. So the possibilities are kind of endless with uh, pixel press floors and creating these levels as I avoid this lava. It's also not as easy to play a level as you talk. Just food for thought there. Watch out. 
So still collecting coins, still getting through this level. Going to be on to floor three. Now this is an interesting spot where he put a super coin on the other side of the portal. So I got to time my jump, which I didn't do. So I jumped in the portal and missed that super coin. So that'll be one less uh, point on the leaderboard for me. So still moving along, trying to get 100% of the coins so I don't miss out on any of those points on the leaderboard. And all right, grab my key for floor three. There's a super coin there. And okay, so I beat the level, um, jumped in the portal. Getting to this level end screen, uh, it's asking me for my initials to jump in the leaderboard. So I'm gonna tap, put my initials in, submit. And now it gives you the option to share your level. Uh, this is where you can share it on Twitter, Facebook, uh, or email this level um, so you can share it with friends. If I click the, uh, well, currently I'm not, I don't have my Facebook tied in with this. So if I want to email this level to somebody else in the office, maybe challenge, uh, let's say, John Haney, one of our team members, to this level, I can send him this level. So then now he is uh, going to get an email saying, uh, that I'd beat this level, I got a score of 23 and kind of challenge him to beat my score. So when I exit out of this, now you can see some of the things that uh, I was talking about with the new ways to find created levels. This is kind of our overhauled new end screen uh, that will be coming up in one of the next couple updates. Uh, you can see over here to the right, you now have the like button, you have your add to favorites button. So if I click that, now I've liked the level. Uh, you can also see other levels by the same creator. So easy has created, looks like about 10 levels. Um, so you can scroll through those levels. So if you like a creator's level, you can then check out immediately other stuff that they have done. Um, so that's a pretty cool new feature uh, that's coming soon, uh, along with the share that's already in this newest up update. Um, so let me back out of here. Mm, that's ninjutsu. Um, as I'm doing this too, if you guys have any questions, uh, go ahead and ask on the Twitch page. Um, we'll do our best to answer them. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is that uh, coming soon too, we will be available uh, to play on iPhone 4S and also iPhone 5 and anything past 4S and iPod Touch and better let's see on those devices the iphone and the ipod it will be play only but uh being able to jump into levels in the arcade and play is uh, a pretty awesome feature um, let me see if i can get this off of here how do i get it back on me Hey, Daniel, do you know how to get this back on me? Oh, never mind. I got it. I got it. Right here, right here. All right. Okay. So as I said, it's available on iPhone and iPod here within the next couple of updates. We're going to get that going. Um, as you can see here, I got an iPod Touch. Uh, I got it in the Logitech Shell, which is a pretty cool controller to use when you're trying to play games, especially like platformer games. Um, you can see here I got the arcade pulled up, and I can pick a level. And immediately jump right in and play on the iPod Touch, which is pretty cool. Even got a little music going here, too. So just like the regular game, um, I'll be able to play on my phone. Um, also be able to share, same thing on my phone. Uh, you will not be able to create within the phone, but uh, for on the go and want to just play some quick levels in the arcade and anything else like that it's a pretty cool feature and like I said this will be coming soon um, 
That's really about it uh, as far as new features we have coming soon. We're going to keep posting things on our Facebook and Twitter. So if you're following us, uh, we'll keep posting updates and things that we have coming. Um, the level end screen fixes, the uh, iPod and all that hopefully will be in the next update or two. And make sure you guys go and get the update that just came out yesterday. Uh, do we have any questions or anything? Sure. Yeah, we did get a few questions. Um, one came in from Twitter um, from at easy, I think it's 1002020. Um, if I make a game, can I publish it to the App Store? And um, no, that is not a feature um, that we have right now. So um, you can publish it to the arcade, and as Josh was going over, you can share it to your social feeds. So um, if you want to try to get a lot of um, people playing your game, that's probably the best way to do it right now. And you know, it's a it's a free app, and it doesn't cost anything to play anybody's levels. So you know, if you got levels that you want people to see, share them on Facebook, share them on Twitter, and get people to get the Pixel Press app, and then they can play your level amongst other people's levels, and uh, really see what people are coming up with creation-wise. Yeah, the other question we got on Facebook um, from Patrick, and we get this question a lot, is when are we going to be on Android devices? And um, that is something we are working on. It's probably going to be this summer, um, probably Q3. So we will definitely keep all of you um, Android users updated um, anytime we have any announcements. But um, it's going to be a little bit until we're on Android. We haven't forgot about you guys. We're excited to get this thing out on iOS, and the Android is just another step that... Uh, we're gonna to get to, and hopefully sooner rather than later, because uh, we want to share this with as many people as we can, so. Yeah, and then um, we're also doing um, an Ask Me Anything this Wednesday on Reddit, so I'll uh, just go ahead and throw that out there. So if you guys do have more questions, if you're watching this broadcast after we've been live, um, you know, feel free to log in on Wednesday. The whole team's gonna be online answering any questions you have. Um, so I thought I'd just go ahead and throw that out there too. Yeah, and I mean, we're going to try to do these Twitch things every Thursday now, so you know if you guys have questions or you guys have things that you want addressed, um, get them to us. And on these uh, Twitch broadcasts on Thursdays, we can try to tackle different topics and keep showing new art, keep showing uh, new features and things we're working on uh, to get in the app. So, Yeah, so we will see you guys next week. We're doing this weekly now, um, every Thursday, 2 p.m. Central. Um, so Josh will be back with... Hopefully more levels that you guys have updated. Yeah, and let us, let us know if you guys want to see something. And like I said, another thing too is we're working on that arcade to get it as user-friendly as possible with more categories and filters and being able to search and find people's levels. So uh, let's continue work in progress. And uh, yeah, whatever you guys want to see, just let us know. I think that's it. Thanks, guys. See you next week. <laughs>